Today, I'm building a Farnsworth. Warehouse 13 is a vaguely steampunk show on the Siffy channel. I'm gonna say it that way until they fix their logo. Honestly, I find the whole premise a little hilarious, but I really like their props. Now, I'm not sure how helpful this is gonna be to you because this is a really specific prop that can only really be used for Warehouse 13 or steampunk related videos. And that's the sort of specificity that I try to avoid in my build videos. It's kinda like if I decide to build, oh, I don't know, Batman armor or Portal 2 long fall boots. They just can't be used outside of their franchise. But I really fell in love with this little gadget, so I'm gonna give it a shot, and maybe you can take some technique that I use in this video and apply it to some prop you're working on. Yeah, let's build a Farnsworth. Tools and materials. All these parts are pretty specific, so I'll put links in the description. One Richard Wheatley fly fishing box. A three and a half by six inch piece of brass that's going to be used for the faceplate. I couldn't find brass the right size, so I used steel and spray paint. One red transparent lens cap. One glass lens from a 1937 Ford radio dial. One dime sized washer. One dime sized hex nut. Super glue. Brown spray paint and possibly clear coat. Black felt. A 50 second USB recording module, one glass mosaic gem, four brads or mini brass nails, one black fluted knob, one black fluted radio knob, two screws and four matching nuts, one chopstick, black acrylic paint, one drill with bits, a dremel with these attachments, a hammer, tin snips, an exacto knife, scissors, a glue gun and glue, pliers, a soldering iron and solder, a paint respirator, and clamps! The first thing I did was paint the back of the radio dial lens black with acrylic paint. I didn't use spray paint because acrylic is easier to remove if I ever need to. Some of the Farnsworth replicas that I've seen have a gray screen like older CRT monitors, but all the ones on the show are black, so black it is. You'll have to do several coats because the brush leaves streaks when it's wet. Spray paint the case brown. Trace the case onto the metal. Cut a circle slightly smaller than the diameter of the dome onto the metal. Use the red lens to trace holes for the light and for the speaker grate. I also marked four spots around the screen for the brads and this weird little rectangle between the light and the speaker. Use the tin snips to cut out the faceplate pattern. Dremel the edges so that it fits snugly in the Wheatley box. You can see that I already cut the speaker with the thin Dremel head. Mark where the knobs will go, then use a hammer and a nail to put an indent in every spot where you're going to drill. This prevents the drill from sliding or piercing the metal off center. Use the thin Dremel attachment to cut out the circle for the dome and the small rectangle in the middle. This will take a lot of time, so be patient. When you cut out the circle, use the cylindrical Dremel attachment to smooth out the jagged edge. Dremel out the circle for the light and the center knob. Drill a hole for the left knob and the button. Paint the faceplate gold. Bronze. Whatever. Screw in the red lens and then hot glue it in place. Then hot glue the radio dial lens in place. Glue a piece of black felt over the rectangular hole. Glue the glass gem on the front. Attach a washer with super glue to form the metal base of the button. I hot glued a screw into the base of the black fluid washer, then hot glued a matching nut a quarter of an inch below the faceplate so that the screw would turn but not get caught on the glue. I also pressed in the brads around the video screen. The center dial is tricky. Cut a circle from the scrap metal, drill a hole through it, paint it gold, then insert a screw. Tighten one nut on the screw, and then leave the second one loose. Then dremel the skirt off the base of the fluid radio knob and hot glue it over the screw head. I forgot to paint it brown, but thought it looked okay as is. Don't you just love how precisely I fixed it in place? It's just so professional and planned out, not haphazard at all. The center knob on the actual prop has numbers stamped into it, but I don't have any number stamps, so I tried dremeling the numbers. Didn't work, so I just drew the numbers on with a fine pointed sharpie. Now for the data recorder. The website linked in the description explains how to use it. Some people who've also built this prop replace the small LED with a large one. For that, you'll need a soldering iron. When I tested it though, I found out that the small LED worked fine so I didn't end up replacing it. I cut up the adhesive backing so that it would fit better. I cut off the end of a chopstick and made this button out of extra EVA foam. I also super glued a hex nut over the washer. Download a ringtone of your choice and write it to the data recorder. The button is fixed in place so that the fake button presses down on the real one. I use strips of paper as insulation. I put foam spacers in the Wheatley box and conservatively hot glued the faceplate in place just in case I needed to remove it to fix anything. And now you're done.
Now a lot of you are probably going, yeah, that's great, Jake, but that's super expensive. How the hell am I supposed to afford that? And the truth is that I probably could have built the whole thing for 20 bucks, but it would be made out of foam and it wouldn't light up or make noise or anything. I just wanted to get out of my comfort zone on this project. I also wanted to be really authentic with how I made this. A lot of the parts that I used were the parts used by the prop builders who make the props for the show Warehouse 13. Just because I spent so much money on this project doesn't mean that you have to. If you look hard enough, you can find these parts or close facsimiles all over the place. For example, the gem that I use is the center jewel on the faceplate, which I think is actually supposed to be a camera lens. It came in a bag of several hundred for like a buck fifty. Now the part listed for the lens in the link in the description has to be ordered online in packs of 50. One pack is like four dollars and the website you get them from only lets you buy things if they're more than twenty dollars. So I just saved like twenty bucks by using a cheaper part right there. And this button right here is supposed to be made out of a switch that cost like 17 bucks. But as you can see, I just made it out of a hex nut and a washer and like part of a chopstick. The glass dome doesn't even have to be glass. You could probably use the dome from a tap light. My point is that you can cut costs anywhere you want while you're building this. It's just a question of how much authenticity and durability you want to sacrifice. Lastly, I want to do a shout out to Lord Jamie Four for being the first person to guess that I was building the Farnsworth. Who, if I could just add, answered that question with no enthusiasm whatsoever. Unlike who was really enthusiastic. Cause I don't film anything that I build. Doesn't really bug me as much as comments with bad grammar. How is it that you can spell the word communication but not warehouse, your, camera, or the? How? So that's the tutorial, I really hope you liked it. Um, I don't really know what I'm building next, but Hey, you should totally check out these tutorials. They're, they're pretty good. I mean, I think they are, but I don't know. Do it. Click the link.